So in this video, I'm going to work through this problem. Find the coordinates of where on the curve x squared y plus xy squared equals 2. The tangent is firstly parallel to the x-axis and then parallel to the y-axis. Now, let's just make sure we understand what this question is actually asking. So at some point for this curve, the tangent is parallel to the x-axis. Now, the x-axis looks like that, of course. So if it is parallel to that, then that means that the gradient of that tangent is 0, in which case the point in question is a stationary point. OK? And then if it is parallel to the y-axis, OK, then the gradient is infinite. In which case, it, it would look something like this. So the curve comes in and does that. And so we're looking for that point there. Okay? Whereas here, we're looking for maybe something like that. Okay? Just so that we're clear on what we need to be looking for here. So, the first thing to do is to differentiate it. So, d by dx of the left-hand side, x squared y plus xy squared is equal to d by dx of 2. So we're going to need to use the product rule twice here. So the product rule here, we've got the first times by the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first. So 2xy. So that is from the first bit. Now we need to differentiate xy squared. So we have the first times the derivative of the second, which will be 2y dy by dx. So we'll have 2xy dy by dx plus the second times the derivative of the first, so just y squared, is equal to the derivative of 2, which is 0. Now, my options here uh, are to uh, rearrange to get dy by dx equals and then solve the problem. Now, for part A, because we want to find whether it's parallel to the x-axis, you can either rearrange to get dy by dx equals, or, and then put the numerator equal to 0, or you can put dy by dx equal to 0 now. There's nothing stopping you from putting dy by dx equal to 0 now. Now, if that's the case, so for part A, because we're looking for a stationary point, stationary points exist when dy by dx is 0. OK, so I'm going to do it both ways, just so you can see, you know, if you're used to one way uh, or if you're used to another, then you might, you can compare and contrast. OK, so first way that you may be more comfortable with rearrange to get dy by dx equals. OK, so what I would have to do is move the 2xy and the y squared over to the right hand side and then I would factorise the left hand side. So I'm going to do that in a couple of steps. So um, let's factorise the left hand side. So I'll have x squared plus 2xy dy by dx. So I've got those two terms there. And on the right hand side, I've moved the y squared and the 2xy onto the right hand side. So dy by dx is going to be equal to minus y squared minus 2xy over x squared plus 2xy. OK. Now, because stationary points exist when dy by dx is 0, if dy by dx is 0, that implies that the numerator is 0. So minus y squared minus 2xy is 0. Now, I can divide through by the minus 1. That's fine. Uh, so I would get that. Then I could factor out the y. So I'd have y, y plus 2x is 0. Okay, which then means 
that either y is 0 or y is minus 2x. Okay? Now, let's just pause there. And I said I would show the other way as well. So, because you're looking at stationary points exist when dy by dx is 0, you could just put dy by dx is 0 now. So that makes that term 0 and that term 0. And so you actually just get 2xy plus y squared is 0, which is precisely the same as what we've got there. So it skips out this rearranging. Okay, and that is perfectly fine. You can do that. And that saves you time in the exam. And also uh, any potential algebraic mistakes in rearranging. Okay, so you could do that. But of course, this format might be useful for part B. Okay, just as a heads up. So, let's take a look at our two things that we've got here. Either y is 0 or y is minus 2x. Now, if y is 0, let's take a look at the original equation. If y is 0, we're going to get 0 plus 0 is 2. OK, well, we can't have that, can we? OK, so uh -uh, can't have y is 0. There are going to be no uh, stationary points occurring when that happens. OK. So that leaves us with y is equal to minus 2x. So what we've got to do is we've got to substitute y equals minus 2x back into the original equation. So with y is equal to minus 2x, we're going to have x squared times minus 2x plus x times minus 2x squared is equal to 2. So minus 2x cubed plus x times minus 2x all squared would be 4x cubed is equal to 2. So that means that we've got 2x cubed is equal to 2. So x cubed must be equal to 1. So x would have to be equal to 1. And when x is 1, we know y is equal to minus 2x. So 1 minus 2 is the stationary point. OK, so that's what we have. So we know that actually 1 minus 2 is the stationary point. That is the point where the tangent is parallel to the x-axis. OK, so that's part A. Now, let's erase that bit. And we'll erase that. OK. Um, now, I'll just erase that bit for the moment. OK. Now, when we're parallel to the y-axis, the gradient will need to be infinite, essentially. Now, I'm not going to write down infinite gradient occurs when dy by dx is equal to infinity, because you can't be equal to infinity. I don't want to write down an, equ an equation like that. You can't use infinity like a number. So um, one way that you could do this is just write it in words. So. Um, you could state uh, infinite gradient occurs uh, when the denominator is zero, for example. Okay, so I could write that down. In which case, I know that I need to look for x squared plus two xy is equal to zero. So I need the denominator to be zero. Now, I will show you another method of doing this in a moment, OK? But I'll just go through it this way, because people will probably be a little bit more comfortable doing it this way. So x squared plus 2xy is equal to 0, OK? So we'll factor out the x. I'm going to get x plus 2y is equal to 0. So either x is 0 
or x is equal to minus 2y. Now, if x is 0, we're going to get 0 plus 0 is 2, which of course can't happen, so uh -uh, can't have that. So x is going to have to be equal to minus 2y. So we'll substitute that in. So if x is minus 2y, we'll have minus 2y squared times y plus minus 2y times y squared is equal to 2. So here we'll have 4y cubed, then take away 2y cubed is 2. So 2y cubed equals 2. So y cubed would have to be equal to 1. So y would have to be equal to 1. And if y is equal to 1, then x has got to be minus 2 lots of 1. So minus 2, 1 is the point with infinite gradient. So I positioned my y-axis on the wrong side, didn't I? So there you go. Here's your y-axis, and there's your minus 2, 1. OK? Now, obviously, I'm not... I don't know what the original curve looks like, okay? So I don't know if it's going that way, or if it's going that way, or if it was going that way, okay? I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. So, minus 2, 1 is my answer. Now, I suggested that there was another possible way of doing it, and I'd like to go through that now. Now, I'm going to go all the way back to the start. I, I recognise I labelled that as A, but it was B. I'm going to go all the way back to the start. And instead of differentiating with respect to X, I'm going to differentiate with respect to Y. The reason will become clear in a moment. So differentiating with respect to Y, X squared times Y, so product rule, the first times by the derivative of the second. So the derivative of the second would just be 1. So I just get x squared. Plus the second times the derivative of the first. Now, because I'm differentiating x squared with respect to y, I would get 2x and then dx by dy. OK? And of course, I'm multiplying this by y as well. So I'll pop a y in there. So it's y times the derivative of 2x. Oh, sorry, y times the derivative of x squared, which is the 2x dx by dy. Then plus the first times the derivative of the second, which would be just be 2y, so 2xy. Then the second times the derivative of the first, which would be 1 dx by dy. So I would have y squared dx by dy. And the right-hand side just differentiates to 0. OK. Now, um, so points uh, of infinite gradient occur when dx by dy is 0, OK? Because I need um, dy by dx to be infinite. And I know that dx by dy is 1 over dy by dx. So if dy by dx is 0, then I have... Sorry, if I, if I know that dx by dy is 0, dy by dx would have to be infinite. OK? So that's kind of like a hodgepodge way of explaining that. But hopefully that kind of makes sense as to why dx by dy would have to be 0. So now I can just substitute dx by dy is 0 into this, and I'll get x squared plus 2xy is 0. Factor out the x's. And I get either x is 0 or x is minus 2y. And of course, we know that x can't be 0. So x has to be minus 2y. So I'll get minus 2y squared y plus minus 2y y squared equals 2. So 4y cubed, uh, sorry, take away 
2y cubed is 2. So 2y cubed equals 2. So y cubed equals 1. So y must be equal to 1. And if y is 1, then x will be minus 2 lots of 1. So minus 2. And we get the minus 2, 1 that I had before. OK, so you can do it that way and go back to the start and redifferentiate if you like. Um, but hopefully you've seen enough options in there uh, so you can see how you can tackle this problem. Either um, you find dy by dx and rearrange it. Um, so you get dy by dx equals some function of x and y. And that really allows you to solve either of these problems. If it was just parallel to the x-axis, I would have just done differentiate with respect to x and then put all the dy by dx is equal to zero. I would have done it the quick way. Okay? But there are options here for how you want to tackle it.